Urban explorers, what's the most scariest thing you've experienced while exploring? This was in a village up in the hills in India. The sun sets there pretty late during the summer, but the hills get extremely quiet after sundown. One day in June a couple of years ago, around 8 p.m., I was walking around an isolated area, exploring. There was a tiny road, on one side of which there were some houses. On the other side, there was a huge valley. This road led to a forest, which monkeys frequent and I wasn't planning to go there since these monkeys tend to be hostile. I took a turn inwards, after the houses stopped. There were dust roads here, and some heavy undergrowth. I was about to turn around, since it was nearing sunset, and it gets very dark right after. However, I kept moving and suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, found a clearing. The bushes had all been removed. It was a perfect circular shape, and there were some thick branches that were kept in place of the perimeter, perhaps to prevent people from entering. I dislodged them and stepped in and saw a bed of logs that was placed in the middle of the clearing. It was covered by a white sheet. It looked like a Hindu funeral pyre but you can't just hold funerals anywhere randomly. That place gave me chills for some reason. I could hear monkeys howling and birds chirping all this time, but there was complete silence in the clearing. I turned around and saw that the branches that I had displaced to enter were back in place. I got very spooked out and left immediately. This is just the short version, but a black dog kept disappearing and then reappearing in places that were impossible for it to have gotten to. We followed it all night long and it led us up a hill right as the sun was about to rise. We heard one last mournful howl from the dog, climbed the hill, and found the remains of an abandoned cabin. Beside the cabin was a dog house with a rope tied to it. At the end of the rope were bones. I don't know if they were dog bones, it's quite possible the owner just fed bones to the dog as a treat, but in my mind we just spent several hours in pursuit of a friendly ghost dog who ultimately led us to the place where he died. TLDR, followed a ghost dog all night, then found his bones as soon as the sun came up. Sleeping amid domestic disputes, gunshots and barking attack dogs when I visited Slab City, California to take some pictures of the art and camp for a night. I live in a very rural area. There are many abandoned buildings. Sometimes entire towns are abandoned. Though, you have to be armed when exploring, as abandoned houses are prime estate for meth labs. I've been fortunate to have not crept upon a meth lab yet. Anyways, not sure if this counts, but there is an all but completely abandoned town I explored. The scary part wasn't the buildings. Most of them seem typical. Gutted, musky, edgy graffiti, the works. The church was a little odd, as it was the only building that seemed untouched despite being vacant the longest. Everything was still where it was left, no graffiti. The cemetery however, gave me probably the most disturbing experience so far. This cemetery was near the church, with a dirt road running right through the middle of it. The youngest grave was 1934. The oldest were late 1700s. Most of the tombstones were dilapidated. Infant tombstones missing their lamb figurines, fences warped, and a lot of them not even standing anymore or even in their correct places. I remember a couple dozen of the tombstones being uprooted and haphazardly leaned against the trees, that also began to swallow them over time. This place was truly abandoned, generations of people forgotten, with no one left to pay their respects. Remember how I said there was a road in the middle of the cemetery? Well, the cemetery was there before the road. I guess I was too dumb at the time to fully realize that those tombstones against the trees actually belonged to the ones under the road. I was unfortunate enough to find out that none of them were relocated. It had rained a couple days prior to my exploration, so the road was soft. So I go back into the car after checking things out and make my way through the road. Just before leaving the span of the cemetery, the front of my car falls and I become stuck. Thinking I just hit a wet spot, I go out and see. I didn't like what I saw. Under my tires was an amalgamation of wooden splinters, decomposing fabrics, and I saw a glimpse of bone. I didn't know the sheriff's number, and I needed someone who can pull me out. So even though I didn't want to, I called 911, and told them what I needed and that I fell into an unknown grave. I ended up coming home pretty shaken up about it. Surprisingly all the car got was a small scuff. By the way, even after that they still didn't relocate the bodies, not even the one I accidentally struck. They just blocked the road long enough for them to build it up some more. It was my second time sneaking into an old abandoned flour mill. The first time I went, we were able to access the two subterranean levels, a warren of offices on the first level, cavernous concrete space on second level where grain was pumped in. The second time, my friend dropped a glow stick down the first level pitch black stairwell before we headed down. After a moment we heard slow, lumbering, 
dragging footsteps. We exchanged looks. The footsteps stopped just outside of the light of the glow stick, and was replaced with a loud, angry hissing. Needless to say, we hightailed it out of there. We also stumbled across a fishing gaff, big hook on a six-long pole, while on the roof of the second floor of an outbuilding. Good times. Old asylum in the UK with some friends about 15 years ago. We'd been a few times, but never made it to the main hall. Finally figured out we could do it by climbing onto the roof of the corridor between the hall and the reception, and dropping a rope down through an open skylight. Climb down, and finally make it into the main hall. Have a good look around, in the attics, the dressing rooms under the stage, all over the place. Decide it's time to leave, and head back through administration towards the skylight. Turn the corner towards the corridor, and there's security, police and dogs about 50 yards away by the skylight. Thankfully no torches on, so we ran back to hide. Unfortunately we ran different directions, I ran back to the main hall, and down under the stage into the dressing rooms. Where I got behind something in a corner and hid. With my torch off. In the pitch darkness. In an abandoned asylum. On my own. Was down there for about 20 minutes I think, I could hear footsteps moving around in the main hall, but then coming into the doors into the dressing rooms. Absolutely bricking it, partly about being caught, partly having been sat there trying desperately not to think about horror films. Turned out to be my friends looking for me, as there was no phone signal in that spot under the stage. Security and police had left, but friends saw they had removed our rope. Ended up carrying a ladder from the attic, rushing it to the skylight, assuming we'd set a sensor off on our way in, and then racing across the rooftops to the gap in the fence. Security drove up just as we got out, thankfully, and denied everything. Turned out the police were reluctant to send the dogs into an unknown abandoned building full of broken glass. I've done a lot of urban exploration but have only had one scary experience, I was exploring Atbury in Wichita Falls, Texas back in the early 90s. I was on one of the higher floors and saw an old wooden door at the other end and made my way over. I opened up the door and almost stepped through it into nothing but air. It must have been a 50 feet drop to the concrete below. Seriously, the door just opened up to nothing. I'm not afraid of heights, but almost stepping off a 50 feet ledge is pretty effing terrifying. I took a photo from the bottom looking up at the door. It's somewhere buried in my old things. I'll see if I can find it. Also an abandoned radar base in Vermont. I climbed a very rusted out very tall tower in the winter. Bullet holes everywhere and parts of the floor were missing. When I was around 8 or 9, my sisters and I would stay the night with our friends. They lived in what is essentially an entire town made of trailer parks. Their house was right next to this abandoned house that looked straight out of a horror film run down, great wood, boarded up windows, dead trees in the yard. It was always kind of a thing that we would dare each other to go in, but we must have all been cowards because we all found reasons to not follow through. Until one day, it was suggested we all go in. It should have been condemned. The inside was full of broken glass and rotting floors. There were rusty brownish stains on all of the walls. And in the kitchen, there was nothing but a wooden contraption with strings hanging from it, and fur all around the floor. It was an animal torture device. Once we realized this, we booked it and never went back or talked about it ever again. And I had nightmares that entire night. We were playing airsoft with two friends in a huge abandoned cement factory. There were some cool huge rooms with very high ceilings and many floors. In one of these rooms near the top of the biggest building we decided to play a CQB game. There was a lot of stuff lying around and we each started to make our little forts. I looked at my friend on the other side of the room, maybe 30 meters away. He started lifting this big metal crate thingy and all of a sudden he disappeared. There was a hole under it and he fell in. I thought he had dropped 10 meters to the room below and died or got very injured. We rushed, looked in the hole and we were very relieved to see there was another floor between the big rooms and he only dropped 2 to 3 meters meters. He was a bit bruised but nothing broken. I was exploring an old train station in Detroit, not from there. Was just visiting family. Locals will know what one I'm talking about, it was just me and my aunt driving through in the middle of the night, and spreading milkweed seeds so that butterflies would come through in the springtime. The building is actively being restored, and we drove around the backside. Not seeing any signs saying no trespassing, we got out and started tossing seeds along the fence line. We finished spreading the seed and as we were returning to the car, we saw red and blue lights, so we ran to the car and jumped in as a police cruiser pulled up beside us, and then another one pulled up behind us. I was thinking to myself, this is it, there goes my future. I'm gonna get busted for trespassing, and they're gonna find the weed in my system, 
and I'm gonna be in the system for the rest of my life. My aunt is a really pretty woman, and so she started crying and saying that she and I were dealing with the death of my uncle, who had died two years prior, and he let us go, and she said, if they ID'd me, and ran it right there, I would have gotten arrested on the spot. I actually got busted trespassing on government. Property, and my name is on a watch list. That was the closest call I've had in a while. I don't really buy into the paranormal stuff and feel like most of it has an explanation, so I don't really have many stories about that. Other than the time I was exploring a 150-year-old abandoned asylum by myself, and the wind was blowing through a vent on the wall and making this really annoying rattling noise. I muttered stop it while I was setting up a photo and the noise immediately stopped and never started up again. Whatever, I was comfortable in the place and never felt like I was in any danger during the many times I visited. Scariest moment related to other people? Was exploring in Gary, Indiana a while back. Incidentally we'd run into some local kids in an abandoned church who told us police don't care if they catch you in the buildings. Sure enough the next day we had just finished exploring the abandoned post office, and walked out the front door to find a police car at the curb. Locked eyes with the officers, one of them rolled his window down and asked how we were doing, then told us to stay out of trouble and drove away. Sure enough, police don't care. Also on the same trip, exploring an abandoned hospital with the ceilings caving in and tons of water damage, and the power was still on. Fun time trying to make sure you didn't touch anything that could electrocute you. Went into old abandoned school a few summers back that opened in 1923 and closed back in 2009 called Flint Central High School. I went with a few friends to go tag around with some spray paint when we stumbled upon the science room that had a bunch of baby pigs preserved in jars you sitting in the teacher's closet. One of the people I was with came back for them and found someone to donate them to, it was really creepy in the moment though. Extremely long story short, a friend and I were exploring an old maintenance tunnel in our town. We brought rope and flashlights because after a few dozen yards it's impossible to see anything and we did not want to get lost. For context, this tunnel was rumored to be haunted or whatever because it used to be a hotspot for satanic rituals and whatnot from Satanists and the like. We got pretty deep in, our flashlights randomly shut off, the rope was cut, and my friend disappeared. I found him trying to claw his way out of some runoff pond in the middle of it all. I got him out, he almost drowned, and there was nobody else around. We left, never talked after that, and never urban explored again. It didn't help that we were impressionable fifth graders. Definitely one of my creepiest experiences in that area. After that, he became extremely introverted, suicidal, and overall was suddenly a different person. Before this all he was a really happy, bubbly dude, and we'd go exploring and play Pokemon and Bakugan together. After this he became really quiet, withdrawn, sold all of his Pokemon slash miscellaneous toys. Overall just a weird and disturbing experience from the proximate cause to the aftermath of it all. I was exploring this old town in SoCal, trying to get into some of the buildings. This shop had a couple of connexes behind it, and they had shelves and the like for storage. In one connex, there was a table. On the table, was a pile of dark sand. Someone had placed white stones in a circle, and within the circle was a single footprint from an infant. I have researched things related to magic and witchcraft when I was going through my rebellious phase. It always creeps me out to find what is obviously the remains of a ritual. There's an abandoned sawmill near my parents' house with a rock quarry filled with water in the back. I live in the middle of nowhere so it's pretty common to just ride around and explore since there's nothing else to do. My friend and I had been there many times before since it was a pretty chill spot to hang out and smoke or whatever. We were riding around with some girls late one night and they had never been so we decided to take them. It's very dark and I was the only one with a decent flashlight. We parked at the mill and started walking the trail back to the quarry with me leading the way. We were almost to the water and I was probably a good 10 feet or so ahead of everyone else. I shined my flashlight around just looking at stuff. Sure enough, right at the edge of the water was a fat, homeless? Couple laying completely buck naked on a towel. As soon as my light hit them the male's head shot up and he looked straight at me. I was the only one that saw them because I took my light of them very quickly. I stopped and very calmly said guys, we need to leave. Now. My friends took off running without even a second thought without knowing what it was. I couldn't help but laugh at this point from the absurdity so I was running behind them full speed giggling like a little girl. Looking back I'm sure the couple was just as scared as I was but I'm glad we didn't stay to find out. TL, DR, Abandoned Saw Mill Slash Quarry. Naked, possibly homeless, chubby people. Ran like hell while uncontrollably giggling. 
I found a dead dog in an apartment building in Pripyat, the town where the families who worked at the Chernobyl nuclear reactor lived. If I'm honest, it wasn't that scary, it had been dead for some time and was therefore very unlikely to attack any of us. It wasn't even much of a dog anymore. By that point I guess you could say it was still more than a skeleton but less than a dog. A few weeks back me and a friend decided to go overnight camping in a forest in England. We pulled up at a random opening in the forest line along the road, got our gear and climbed through the open shrubbery. Beyond the shrubs was a dirt path leading into the trees. At the beginning of the path, just beyond the bushy opening, lied a condom wrapper, with no evidence of the used condom, one latex glove, and a scattering of several cloth wipes which had a brown substance on them. We stood in disbelief that was before us, shrugged, and carried on our walk into the trees. We could only imagine what went down to cause such oddities to be left on the forest floor but all we know is something did not go to plan for whoever left it. When I was a kid, my brother and I found what I believe was an old military bunker that was underground. Our grandpa likes to fly model airplanes and we would go with him to this field surrounded by forest. One day we found this large corrugated pipe, tall enough to stand in, going into the ground. We went and got our grandpa, who got flashlights and the three of us went exploring. At the end of the tunnel, about 50 meters in was a landing with a staircase going down. It was of course pitch black dark down there. I think there were two levels and the whole structure was about the size of a small school. There were a bunch of old generators and what looked like switch boards and other ancient electronics. We also found a couple animal skeletons that must have wandered in and got trapped in the dark. It's been demolished since, but it was a pretty cool find. We didn't have a camera at the time and this was before smartphones existed found a bunch of human skulls in an abandoned house once. So basically what happened was that me and my mates were on a hike we were kind of lost so we just made camp there since it was like 7 p.m. We all woke up around 6 to 7 a.m. to a loud noise, sounded like metal hitting metal, we got dressed and headed to where we heard the sound. We found a small hill with a wooden shack on top. On approaching we smelled a smell that almost made us puke. We held our breath and opened the door that is when we saw the two human skulls on a table and a rusty cleaver. It looked like the tools had been moved like really freaking recently. Oh and the floor had a towel on it covered in blood so well that didn't help calming us down. So we got the hell out of their packed up camp and we headed off with all of us with a, carrying one thing per person with four people including me, a pocket knife, hatchet, for firewood, tent stake, and a metal flashlight. Some details might not be right since this happened in 2004, police were notified but never found the shack but did find a creepy AF bloody rusty cleaver. It was a kind of urban area cause that's where the trail started.